Hello everybody and welcome back to On Point HQ and another kit bashing video and possibly my, my strangest kit bash to date. Um, more will become apparent in the video. Now recently I've been, as I am prone to do, um, I was going through my copy of um, Armies of Germany for Bolt Action looking at units I hadn't quite built yet. Now, there was always one that I saw and kind of brushed over and thought nope. Mm, I, I actually think I may have to bite the bullet and just buy one because there's no way I'd be able to kit bash that and that is the Goliath um, so briefly what is the Goliath now, the Goliath was a it was like a remote controlled tracked explosive carriage that was used by um, the German army during World War II so there'll be a picture on the screen now of what it looks like and it's essentially a, a, a small tracked tank box thing is <laughs> the best way I can describe it and it was controlled by a controller with, um, with a long wire and this thing was driven at uh, disabled tanks um, emplacements uh, pillboxes etc and if and when it reached there it was detonated and the snot was blown out of everything um, within a small radius um, so that's that's essentially a very brief history of what the Goliath did um, but I've always looked over it because I thought it just looks a bit different and it's probably outside of my my capabilities but the other day I thought no I'm gonna I'm gonna sit down and I'm gonna do it I'm gonna make one and I've actually I've actually made well I'm gonna call it my impression of one now in, in game terms um, the actual Goliath is more of a token marker than anything so it's a one-shot weapon so it's not gonna be on the battlefield for very long so what I thought was, well, the scale is, isn't, as long as it isn't, you know, four foot long and eight foot wide, it doesn't need to be 100% scale accurate. I mean, the tanks are a bit off in bolt tanks anyway, but that's, that's a, another discussion for another video. Um, but this, no, it doesn't. It doesn't need to be exactly 100% accurate. So I'm going to show you exactly, exactly what I've, what I've done and my take on the Goliath. So there it is. It's a, it's a small, a small looking tank thing. <laughs> so how did I make this? I made it in two parts. Um, and as soon as I sat down, I was, there was sprues everywhere. There was bits and pieces. I was like some kind of mad professor looking through all bits and pieces of what to use. And the, the, the first problematic part was the tracks. I had no idea what I was gonna use for the tracks. Uh, Cause if you look at the, I was looking at some reference photographs for the Goliath and they are just like mini tank tracks. Now initially I was going to, I looked at some uh, old Flames of War vehicles I've got knocking around but they're metal and they were too big and there was no way I was going to be able to use them. And at that point I almost, almost gave up but something made me, me keep looking in, in sprues and I found, I found that um, an old box of bits and pieces that, that came for with the, um, the Opal Blitz truck uh, from Warlord Games. Now there's an option in there to make that vehicle as a multier, which is a half track. And there were some plastic tracks left over because I'd built it as a truck. They were too big, but I thought, what if I reduce them in size? So I cut off about a, just under a third of kind of the off center of the tracks and glued them back together. And they went together ridiculously easily well, <laughs> as you can see. Um, all I did then was I had some um, panels left over from um, an aborted Stuart tank build that I was working on. I'm gonna, I'm gonna use that as a, as a, a destroyed tank because it, it didn't work out as well as I, I really wanted it to. But back to the Goliath. So I used some of those those panels just to put in the middle of the tracks, um, just to represent that the kind of the side panels you see on, on the photographs. Now with the, with the tracks built, it was onto the hull. This is where I really struggled. I was like, well, I couldn't, I couldn't find anything um, to represent the hull or what we're gonna do to, to make it that way. So again, I was like, have I, have I bitten off more than I can chew here? Then I had a bit of a brainwave moment. Balsa wood. Yep, this is made from balsa wood. <laughs> I'll explain. I needed a hull part. So as you'll see, it's about the same, the same width there, like that. So I cut it down, and then just use a craft knife and a file. I just, I carved it into the shape that I wanted. 
what I then did was found all the, all the different panels and bits and pieces left over from different tank builds and just glued them around the, the balsa wood um, kind of frame uh, and then glued the, the tracks to the side. Um, I mean, it's accurate? Absolutely not. I mean, it's nowhere, it's nowhere near accurate. But as a game token, yeah, absolutely, you can get away with that. It all went together, so we just a case of gluing the, uh, gluing the tracks onto the sides and painting it, and it was done. So that's a Goliath, made of um, old tank, old tank track um, bits, sprues, and some balsa wood. Yes, it's uh, it's been a strange week, but there we go. So with this, with the Goliath completed, I needed to build a crew. Um, so first of all, we have this guy. Now he is the um, he's the guy with the control box. So he is uh, he is controlling the Goliath. The control box, uh, I don't know what that is. It's, it's, I think it's off a tank sprue. I know that much. And it might have been a like, exhaust or something. But I trimmed it down and made it, made, put it in his hand. And he looks like he's holding a control box. Uh, I gave him lots of equipment as well. I looked at the um, the Warlord Games version for a bit of inspiration for what the crew would look like. Um, so that's where I've gone with these guys. So he's the guy with the um, with the control box. Another one of the models looked like he was he was carrying a spool of wire as the Goliath is um, is, is wire operated. So I remembered I had arms left over in the Winter German box, and that's a tell of mine. So I just cut off kind of the um, the top uh, bubbly bit that was there, smoothed it down, and it looks like a, um, something you'd have you'd have wire rolled into. Again, just the the box had a Winter German arm. So he was the second crew member. And the team is led by uh, an NCO, which is this guy here. Again, it's a very, very basic Grenadier build. No, the only, the only difference there was that um, the arms are from the um, ones from the US Marine kit and ones, ones that have a grenade in there, but I chopped the grenade off. And then, yep, so he is the NCO of the, uh, the Goliath anti-tank team. So there we go, my most ambitious <laughs> kit, <laughs> kit bash to date. Um, like I said, I mean, it's these are supposed to be a foot high. That looks about a good, a good three feet high. But it's, it's a, in in my mind, it's a game token. It's not, it's not meant to be a, a, a one hundred percent accurate visualization of what a Goliath looked like. Um, but there we go. That was put together in an evening. Like I said, it was, it was quite involved. I put it that way, and I went through trial and error quite a bit to cut to get to this get to this uh, finished result but I'm very happy because I now have another kit bash unit to add to my uh, my late war Germans and I will have to go out and buy a Goliath for it well there we go if you've got any comments or questions uh, about this or in gaming in general uh, don't forget to leave them down below and I'll certainly respond to all comments and questions but as always thanks for watching do take care may your dice roll well and I'll catch you all in the next video so bye bye for now